Thank you. Welcome to this special city council. Your neck's going to hurt. Oh, yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. <laughs> that a special city council uh, um, a meeting. Um, I called this um, because at the end of the last city council meeting, um, we took a couple of votes on the council executive position, and we couldn't get an affirmative vote of five on, on either vote that we took. And so what I, I asked for from the council and received was to um, go ahead to talk with Mr. Reynolds about possibly using an employment service like a land room, you know, to um, just go out here and hire locally. I think one of our problems is where we limited the salary um, 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 range, um, but um, I, I don't want to revisit that. That wasn't the reason for calling the meeting. Um, I was uh, hoping we could get um, a vote, and it would have to be 100% a unanimous vote today to be able to do it because we have to have five votes um, to, to, to pass this. But I would like to use uh, um, Landrum as our um, uh, sort of like HR department and uh, um, have uh, our HR lady and Mr. Mr. Reynolds is just pick us a good qualified candidate if for some reason um, that uh, um, candidate does not work out. The one nice thing about Landrum is they can send you somebody else. And uh, so I'd, I'd just like to go ahead and get the, um, the position filled. Oh, it's going to explode. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's got, it must have a short in it. So in order for us to even be able to discuss it, we need to have uh, a, a motion on the, the, the floor. I've got two lights on. Um. I'll make a motion that we uh, instruct Mr. Reynolds to uh, contact uh, Landrum. Is there a second? I'll second so we can have the discussion. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now, Ms. Myers. Um, well, I... I, I I would certainly be in, in favor of that, I, but I do have a lot of concerns over uh, the hiring of just one person, and that's what we're talking about right now is just hiring one person. Um, I'm more in favor of hiring a person under contract. Um, I think it uh, makes a lot more sense. I think it gets real complicated if we hire a person who is a city employee. One of the questions I have is who fires that person? I mean, if we don't like the way the person turns out, if, you know, if that person isn't meeting our needs and we want to terminate the employment, how, how do we do that? I think that's very problematic if the person is a city employee. Um, I'm not satisfied with uh, any of the candidates that we presently have. I don't think that any of them meet uh, the needs that we have. Um, I talked to a citizen today who said that what we really need, and I, and I agree with this, is somebody who's the legislative uh, person who works for the legislative body who's the equivalent of the uh, mayor's uh, city administrator. In other words, the legislative body uh, has to have a person with that type of, of competence. And I don't see any of the candidates that are still existing having that. So I would be in favor of uh, putting this out again and uh, having uh, the Landrum firm uh, bring somebody or a number of people to us and also I'd like to think about hiring somebody under contract Miss um, um, Myers that uh, my, my intention was is that they um, they would not be a city employee they'd be a Landrum employee and uh, you know um, if they show up one day and not wearing the right color of socks you can tell um, Landrum says send us somebody else you know, and you don't even have to worry about breaking the contract or just send us somebody else. Well, I think that's a good idea because I, I, I you know, I think it's very problematic if we have a city employee and uh, the mayor hires and fires city employees. And so 
I, I just think it's a, a lot cleaner, a lot less problematic if we hire somebody uh, through Landrum get, okay. because it gives us control over that person. All right, thank you, ma'am. Mr. Gerald. Thank you, Mr. President. And I'm some, I feel as though um, I'm somehow lost in the shuffle here. As you all know, I was on the first uh, personnel committee or selection committee that was put together. We had the awesome task of, of reviewing 40 resumes. The next thing I know, we were looking at additional resumes. The question I have is, how did we get from what I think is a normal flow of action is when you rank, at first I need to un a better understanding of the ranking process. Why did we rank the four candidates? And the person, in my mind, in a normal way of thinking, when the first person with the most votes declined, how did we get from not going to the second person on the list over to going to Landrum? What was the purpose of having a ranking process with a person that comes in as number two? We totally disregard that person and we want to go outside and do it again when the personnel committee once before when we talked about going out and getting a, an outside agency to do it for us, we decided not to do that. So now we're back to getting Landrum or someone else to do it for us and we're skipping over the person that was number two and I don't understand exactly how that worked. It would be the normal flow of a progression would have been to go to the second person on the list. Now, if y'all are looking for Jesus to come down here to do this job, I doubt if that's going to happen. But why did we skip the number two person on the list and want to start all over and do something different? I, I, I need an explanation for that. Well, I think the, the, the explanation is probably as varied as there are members on, on council. Um, that, that idea of going to the number two on the list at the on last council meeting was rejected. So that's when I asked for authorization from the council to go to Mr. Reynolds and talk about an alternative process, uh, the, 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 the next step. And I'm, I'd have to apologize here. I did, I was watching Mr. Gerald's and didn't see what order the lights are, um, came on, but I'll just go to Ms. DeWeese. Thank you, Mr. President. And I had just turned my light on, so you were completely in order there. Mm -hmm. um, I have the same concerns about abandoning the process, and there might be a um, compromise here that if any of the applicants that were ranked are still interested, which I believe they are, that they apply with Landrum mm -hmm. and go through the Landrum process. Um, I think that's a great that's idea. And I, you know, I express my support. Um, I didn't raise a big stink about how things went. Um, in life, we make choices, and I could not attend the, <coughs> the meeting. Um, I'll remember my son's event that day. So I mm -hmm. um, right. don't mean to get upset about that, but it was pretty special. Right. Fifth grade stuff. So. Um, but I did go through the process of ranking when we had that process and I turned everything in on time and if that ranking had been referred to in lieu of my vote that was, was denied, um, a certain person would have won um, or been the, the, the first rank. Uh, so I feel that they deserve that opportunity and should be contacted as part of this new process and I would support the new process with that uh, being a part of it. So I don't know if that needs to be added to the motion. I don't. I don't think it needs to be added. Good. Well, I don't. I don't know. We 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 probably could do that. Is that? Uh, yeah. Just uh, ask Ms. Cachera to mm -hmm. let the people know what that next step is. And uh, look, I've got uh, uh, Mr. Townsend, Dr. Pratt, and Dr. Wu both mm -hmm. um, indicating they want want to speak. I'm going to go to Mr. Townsend next. But what I'd like to do is because we are in a formal council s session, but I feel like it's a little bit less formal today. If if you want to say something, don't don't look to me to, to, to just just let's just have the um, big family dinner here and and, and and discuss this. I don't like the menu. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Okay, Mr. Townsend, you first. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. I'm concerned about changing the process. We need to just kind of reflect back on how we got to this point. In my opinion. Uh, 
Council Member uh, Gerald alluded to the uh, the 40 uh, applications <coughs> and the process that we uh, did there, and uh, entwined in that was the uh, the student group that came in and did an assessment of the candidates and gave us some candidates. Additionally, we went back again and we did another ranking and rating process. Uh, I think we, we've uh, narrowed it down to, uh, to uh, some real viable uh, individuals. Uh, just unfortunate that we've had the uh, bad luck of folks declining uh, positions. And I, I would be totally in favor of going to the next candidate, which we always do. And in this particular case, we aren't. Now, we can, we can forecast any kind of problem. You know, we can imagine a problem that we might have. Uh, uh, I would like to be optimistic about about what we're doing, and hopefully we won't have any problem. We could throw a monkey wrench in anything and, and uh, say that we're going to uh, uh, have a problem. Additionally, if there was any kind of selective criteria for this particular position, we should have put it up front. Uh, the kind of specific selective criteria which would eliminate those folks who actually do not possess that selective criteria. We had identified all of the, what I thought was the skills and objectives and the experience that these folks needed to qualify this for this particular position. So I'm not in favor of going to any kind of new process. I think we should go to the next question who would rank higher in, uh, on that and go ahead and select that question. Thank you. All right, thank you. Go to this side. Thank you. Um, this has been an interesting road and I, I think that the, the Landrum um, alternative is a good answer to some of the myriad challenges we've had in the, the concerns about who's, who has control. And, and, and that is a question I'd like to have answered at some point is when, when we make the contract, are, is it possible, who, who has firing capabilities in that situation? Because you know, I, I would like for it to reside with the council and mm -hmm. the council president in some form. Um, but, um, but I think that's been a concern. And I think ultimately one of the things that, that has been a problem for us all is we need somebody there to throw darts at, to say, you know, each of us has a different way we're going to interact, just like we all had a different way of dealing with Mr. Kobe when he was the, the city manager. You know, and, and so I think all of us have a different idea of what this person's going to do, and I think that's part of the why we don't have very clear criteria. I mean, there's there's a description, but it doesn't really say what we all think it needs to say about the person we'd like to hire, and and I also think that one of the things that I've struggled with is, you know, it, the the people we keep ranking top would have been moving down here, relocating their lives, their families, and. It could be that as the process went on, we would find that they weren't the right fit, and and they would feel like they weren't. They would decide they weren't the right fit, and and that's a big commitment. I think the Landrum option does give us that, you know, flexibility where they they know it's a temporary position that could become some sort of a permanent position. Um, but I I do want to make sure, and and I'm not out in the world hiring people usually, but but. Sometimes I think of the, the Landrum positions as more of the clerical kind of thing. And I, I want to make sure that we're going to really stress that this is a professional position as, as a temporary um, time period. It's, it, I mean, they're professional clerical people, but it's, it's, it's somebody who really needs some knowledge and skills, research abilities, because I think that the, the things that each of us expects of them are beyond what a what a clerical person might might have. So, I, I I'll support um, going to Landrum as long as we, we ensure that uh, the 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 termination criteria are rests with the council and that that it, we we have a clear definition for those people on on what what's going to be expected. Well, as close as we can to what's going to be expected. I just allay uh, many concerns about uh, what type of agency Landrum is. You know, they they uh, they staff um, factories like Monsanto, 
you know, okay. uh, fork truck drivers and machine operators. I know it's not Monsanto anymore, but whatever it it tur 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 turned out to be. And uh, they uh, um, also um, have an executive headhunting search um, 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 element to them, and uh, that uh, uh, apparently they're they're very very good at that too. If if they did have to go out and do a nationwide search, I know the the one time that I've used. Uh, I was employed by them. Um, there was a big uh, defense contractor, may or may not have heard of him, Buzell and Hamilton. And um, um, they had a, a job of writing an officer's intelligence course for a foreign navy that they'd been struggling with for five years. They kind of brought me in to rescue that. Um, and, but I went through Landrum. I was a Landrum employee. And, and so um, I'd um, just delay any any okay. concerns about, about that. And back to one of the things Ms. Myers had said about having more than one person. My per my idea behind this was get this person on and then maybe we could get another Landrum employer too that would work at the pleasure of the, the council e e executive. And before our, we go to our vote, um, I'd like to hear from our two attorneys over here, the one city attorney's office and uh, uh, Mr. Reynolds both on what kind of issues um, we might have if we did have that firing capability on ourselves, because I, I would like to have that as well. Dr. Wu. Thank you. I apologize for being late. Seems like y'all covered a lot of ground <laughs> in five minutes that we get here. And so I'm trying to piece together what I'm hearing occurred before I arrived. Um, I hear one, one string a conversation evidently is uh, Landrum being brought in a to help us hire someone but also the transfer of who hires and fires um, uh, so that's one element I, I'm hearing and the second element I'm hearing is do we continue the process we had before or you know start the process over the sunshine law makes it so frustrating at times uh, I ran into a gentleman as I was leaving uh, lunch the other day uh, who used to be the attorney for the airport. And he looked at me and he said, I'd love to apply for that job. He said, I, I've worked for the city. I know the city. Uh, I'm retired, so I don't have a dog in the hunt. Uh, I've got experience in knowing how the city works. And the first thing I wanted to do was call everybody on council and says, way, I found a wonderful candidate. Mm -hmm. And because of the sunshine law, I can't do that. Then more recently, there's an email, I believe, that all of us got from Karen Sindel. Uh, and she ran for county commission. She's been on their planning board, very capable person, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, I'm seeing qualified people like that that are stepping up that we did not know before. Uh, addressing the process, should we continue what we had before or start anew? My personal tendency, uh, and of course everybody's free to disagree with it, is that uh, there was a reason why the folks on that list were second and third in my mind. Um, and they were second and third because I had a, a choice that I, you know, like to see fulfilled and that was it. Um, in my mind, I have no problem going and starting a process in you especially in light of the fact that we've got these, you know, in my mind, excellent candidates that have stepped forward. I mean, for us to get an attorney who's saying that, you know, well, I'm already, you know, I'm getting retirement, but this will supplement my retirement. I'm not committed to either side. I know how the city works. To me, makes a very attractive, very attractive candidate. As far as the land and process, uh, um, you know, I think everybody knows my history, where I come from and everything else. But I think we have to be real careful to follow what the charter intended us to do. Um, you know, like the charter, don't like the charter, I think we're a nation of laws. Today there was a ruling that was handed down and there's some people that are very excited about it and some people that hate it. And I think the bottom line is what separates us from other countries is that we're a nation of laws. If we don't like a law, then you, you know, you go and change that law, but you don't go contrary to what that law says. And in my mind, the law says the mayor has the ability to hire and fire all city staff. Now, the attorney may correct me, and if the attorney does correct me and I'm wrong, 
I'm willing to vote and then go in a different direction. But again, I think the thing that distinguishes us from other countries is that when there's a ruling, there's a law, we obey the law. Um, I don't know if I'm rambling or not, but I'm, what I'm saying is that I personally would like to see the process start again. Uh, if we don't like the fact that the mayor hires and fires this person, I think it's incumbent upon this body then to pass or find out how do we pass legislation that enables us to do that. But for us to say we think it would be nice to wave a wand and say we don't like this, we're not going to do it, I don't know is the right way to go. Thank you, Mr. President. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, Ms. Myers, Mr. Gerald, uh, would you be patient with me and allow me to, to get the city administrator and city attorney to kind of weigh in on this issue? If uh, um, one, I guess, on the administrator side, I know you're as anxious to get this filled as we are in the community is. And do you think the, the mayor would give us a fight on being able, in filling this position through Landrum, on um, council having um, the firing authority, you know. Yeah, thank you, Mr. President. Let me let me start first of all by noting that uh, you know this body has made two choices, both of which the mayor has uh, uh, complied with the wishes of the council and uh, has made an offer, uh, also within the the yeah. the amounts that uh, council had wished uh, to be uh, negotiated. So uh, there is no issue there in my mind in regards to uh, whether or not the mayor is somehow uh, you know going to thwart the will of council when it comes to their executive um, you know I, I think the Landrum idea is interesting I, I, I do think that that will take one of your candidates off the table who is currently a city employee because I do not believe that a, a city employee is going to quit the city and the city benefits and therefore, uh, uh, you know, to be in essentially a, an at-will temporary position. Um, and, and which then at that point, uh, absent there being anyone else coming forward, you have one person, uh, which by the way is your number two person that, that in, in the ranking systems. So uh, I, administration and the mayor's office are looking for a way to assist you to find your executive and whatever that is uh, I'm more than willing to to try to make that happen well and and, I, and, 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 and as as history has shown the mayor is too well and, and I, I'm gonna uh, uh, accept that for just just what it is we would have to meet as a body anyway and have an affirmative vote of five people you know to be able to, to uh, do it and we could express our wishes to the mayor um, with that that vote and uh, so I don't I, I, I can't see him um, uh, taking any other posture than yeah, and, and also to be clear, Mr. President, I, I don't see the Landrum issue being an issue either. I mean, I, what I'm trying to say is that we, we, we are more than willing and capable to assist whatever decision that this body makes. Uh, uh, as we have in the past, the problem has been that those that we have assisted have decided not to take the position. All right. Ms. Myers. I don't even know where to start saying what I want to say. The charter is clear and unambiguous. We have a legislative branch of the government and an executive branch of the government. The legislative branch of this government has the right under the charter to hire its own staff independently of the executive branch. This, this issue has already been brought up to council uh, before. Yes, we have the right to contract. Now, let me, I, and, and quite frankly, uh, the selections that have been made, I, I, if they if they want to go through Landrum, that's fine with me. But I want to tell you what the most important issue for me is right now. Is I want 
whoever we hire to be independent of the office of the mayor. Landrum is a good company. And let me disclose to you right now that I am a Landrum employee. My company that I work for, all of the employees are hired through Landrum. I have been a Landrum employee for eight years. They are a wonderful company, and, one, and, and they do, go, uh, they're not just a clerical, I, trust me, I'm not a clerical <laughs> worker. <laughs> and uh, one of the, the good things about, about Landrum that I like is they have highly experienced labor attorneys who work for them, and they make those attorneys available to their clients. So not only would we be getting uh, someone to assist us in getting, if we want to, any of these people who've applied want to go through Landrum and be a Landrum employee, that, that's the only way I, I would support their, their, that's the only th way I'm going to support it. I'm fi fine if they want to go through Landrum. That gives us also the opportunity, as the president said, of hiring other people through Landrum if, because I, I feel that whoever we hire is going to need an assistant because I think that person's going to have a lot of work. But the great thing about Landrum is they provide a lot of resources, including attorneys, to answer any labor question you have regarding your employee. And so that's a, another positive. Also, ultimately, it gives us control over the hiring and firing and also the setting of the salary of the um, employees that are going to be providing services to the legislative branch of this government. So I don't see this as setting the process aside. I mean, we've gotten this far. We've, there's still three people on this list. <clears throat> The issue is, I think the reason people have turned down this job is because they will have divided loyalties if they are employees of the city. They'll have to uh, take orders from us, orders from, they, they don't know who, they, they don't want to be caught in the middle. I think that's why Scotty Davis turned, turned the, the job down. I think that's why the last candidate turned the jo job down. And I have approached very qualified people who would be very interested in this job, but for the fact that they don't want to be in the middle of the council and the mayor. So taking that out of the equation is going to help anybody who takes the, the job. If, for instance, the, um, the lady who, came, who was the second uh, uh, ranked person, that I, I would think if, if, she, if we should go with her, that that would be a great benefit to her because then she would know where her loyalties ultimately lie and who her employer is. So I think that it's a win-win, not only for us, but for the whoever uh, ends up working for us. So that's my main concern right now, is how they're going to, are they going to be a city employee? And I've already said, I, I, I would prefer that they be a Landrum employee. That's what I would prefer. I think it's, it will take a big burden off of whoever we employ and also it will give us the resources we need. It will give us access to labor attorneys who can help us with labor issues. Mr. Gerald. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> and I'm glad, Ms. Myers, you brought up Scotty Davis because that leads to another. But ladies and gentlemen, from time to time I hear us moan and groan about council's authority. And since the charter has been implemented, we've had numerous discussion of discussions regarding who does what. But aren't we not smart enough to understand we made a decision. We've made a decision. Now we said we, we would abandon this decision that we made and give it to someone else as if it's their responsibility. That is totally absurd. We rank those people, and as I said before, and I'll say it again, I learned more 
reviewing 40 resumes than I ever wanted or needed to know. About 40 people and they all went away. And then we backed the train up and start this over again. We ranked those people, we made a decision, number one, number two. Then the question really becomes, does it have to do with the race of Scotty Davis and the race of the number two person we ranked? And I'm going to ask the question. And by the way, Mr. Davis didn't uh, decline. He was never contacted. I had an extensive conversations with Mr. Davis. He was never contacted and, and officially offered the position by anyone here in the city of Pensacola. Well, um, so I'm not finished. I'm not finished. I don't understand what, what you know, if we as a, as a council interviewed, listened, looked at the resumes, and then rank those people, I find it difficult, and there's nothing against Landrum or anybody else. But if we have a responsibility and we want to abandon it and send it to somebody else and say, oh yeah, and then here we're sitting talking about, well, who can fire them, who can do this? We haven't even hired anybody yet. We can't even make that decision to stick to the decision that we made. This whole conversation and this process is just ridiculous. In fact, it passes ridiculousness. Now, if we rank those people, we reviewed, we interviewed them, we talked to them, and if the person who ranked number two should logically be offered the position, if that person declines, then it, it would be all right with me to go outside and try another way. But until we have fully exhausted the decision, and let's not abandon the decision that we made, this doesn't make any sense. Somebody mentioned earlier, we want to hire local. Well, that person is local. So I, I, I'm just not able to connect the dots in this game of, of, of simple foolishness. That's, that's all I can see it as, as simple foolishness. If we have the responsibility for making a decision, which we made, then we should not abandon that process or that decision. Thank you. Yes, sir. And, and regarding Mr. Davis, I can't say what the mayor's office did or did not do. But when I found out um, through the mayor's office that Mr. Davis had declined it, I gave him a call. And he told me precisely why he turned it down when he was made the offer. And I'm assuming that it was having to come from the executive branch of government. And, and there was money is he wanted $96,000 minimum. We already voted that we were going to top it at about 82.5 or something, but he was unwilling to relocate his family for anything less than that. And personally, I think he was worth a whole lot more than that. And out of that entire list, and I didn't even know Mr. Davis was black, the only person that, that uh, um, I could support out of that entire first set of applicants was Mr. Davis. I wasn't interested in anybody after that or a ranking system. And it's one of the reasons I didn't participate in the, the ranking system because I couldn't honestly go in and give any of them above a zero. And so the, we settled this at the last council meeting that we were going to go to some new process. And, and it's not like um, Sam Hall just pulled this out of the air. You know, and so we were at a, a, a log jam last council meeting, and it's time for Miss Miss Deweese. Thank you, Mr. President, and um, I only wish I'd heard from Councilman Townsend um, before I spoke because I do support us moving forward and um, the compromise that I had offered. But my my first concern is that the second ranked person that was my first ranked person. Mm -hmm. I went through the uh, content of the audio tapes twice. Mm -hmm. Um, and really tried to analyze it from every perspective, from an issue of individual council member representation and also the practical matters of this council and how we are represented as a body. And I felt her to be perfect for those things. I was a mortgage lender for many, many years, but it's a problem-solving skill set that I have. And, um, you know, that's I investigate things and I look at processes. So, you know, to look specifically at someone's profession, you have to look at the skills it takes within that profession. And I feel she's perfectly poised for this job. Um, some of the discussion that I've heard 
of the issues that we're trying to cure is the actual hiring and firing of this person and Landrum may not be the only way that we can accomplish that. I certainly support that if um, there's not another option that's viable here today. Um, but we could put legislation in place that would allow us to hire and fire that person but still allow them to have the city benefits and such just like another contract employee. Um, I believe it's within the rights of this council to do that within the charter um, and we could investigate that further if there's a favorable vote to um, to hire the second person in place. So I'd like to make a substitute motion that we um, contact the second ranked uh, applicant for an offer to and make an offer for the position of council executive. Second. Turn all the lights, please. Okay, anybody wanting to speak to that motion? Dr. Pratt. Thank you, Mr. President. I. Um, prepared at this point to not support that motion. I think that um, Ms. Myers made some good points that, you know, I think various people and, and Council, Councilman Wu as well, that various people have had reluctance to even apply because of the convoluted nature of it. And I think that the, the Landrum option that we're looking at now and, and possible other alternatives in the future, but but as an immediate thing, the land room option um, m might give us the opportunity to, to um, get applications from people who were not in favor of working in the convoluted system that we were possibly going to have. Um, I, I will say that in my rankings, <laughs> I ranked the number two person at the bottom, um, and, and certain things, I mean, that, that um, just didn't strike me. I, I, I was looking for someone with a different skill set than, than she showed in, in her application or interview in her personal presentation or whatever. And, and so, so I had ranked her lower. Um, and you know if, if the council does end up wanting to go with her, then I, I'll, I'll work with that. But I, I just think that the Landrum option now having that as an alternative does present us with an avenue that might get more candidates that that we we might be happier with our options in the end thank you Ms. Byers uh, yes I would just like to remind the president that we do have another motion that has not been voted on yet substitute uh, is this a substitute motion? It's a substitute motion, and what we're going to have to do is decide whether we accept the substitute motion, and if we did, then we'd have to have another vote on that because it would be the main motion. And uh, um, I'd, I'd just ask Mr. Reynolds to give us an opportunity to hear to vote whether this is going to be a substitute motion um, or not. He's got his light on. Mr. Mr. Geralds? Yes, I just wanted to remind the group and wonder if it ever occurred to you as we talk about who would have the authority to fire the person, has it ever occurred to any of you that that person might quit <laughs> after they got down here and get a taste of what goes on? So I don't think we have to worry that much about who has the authority to fire them. We need to get someone in here and hope and pray that they will want the job once they find out what goes on in this room. That's all I want to remind okay. you of. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you. Mr. Mr. Gerald. Please vote. We're voting on the substitute? Well, whether the substitute motion becomes the main motion or not, not the motion itself. Okay. Okay, and that fails on a 3-4 vote. So we're back to the, 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 the main motion. Mr. Reynolds. Thank you, Mr. President. And I just want to address a couple issues here. And um, I fully recognize I do so at my peril. Uh, the, the charter is extremely clear uh, on this point. Uh, and let me, let me please read it to you. Under Article 4, Mayor and City Council, Section 4.01, Mayor A1 power to exercise the executive powers of the city and supervise all departments including but not limited to the power to appoint discipline and remove all officers and employees unless otherwise provided in this charter that is an all-inclusive power 
that provides for specific instances if they are enumerated in the charter. The mayor's office has tried very hard to not make the charter an issue. <laughs> We've actually been trying very hard to find you an individual and, and, and pay them, make them a city employee and, 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 and provide them for your use. Uh, but if it becomes a charter issue and a charter question, then the mayor's office has a responsibility to make sure that you all understand what the charter states. And we also have a, a responsibility to ensure that the charter is upheld. Now, that's not meant in any other, other than, than simply an informational item, and I hope we can now put that charter question aside and we can actually talk about filling the position. As I stated before, the mayor's office and the mayor have tried everything we can possibly do to fill this position, to assist you in filling this position. And I just don't want this to get bogged down into an issue of the charter. We are ready, willing, and able to assist you to find, help you find, help you employ, help you acclimate your council executive. Um, Mr. Davis was offered the position. Mr. Davis declined the position. And I can't, you know, that's all I can tell you. Uh, we have documentation of that, including the email that Mr. Davis sent out, which I forwarded to you, all of you, uh, uh, af after we received it. So I hope that we can take a look at what the needs of this body are. They have been articulated in a very good, from my opinion, job classification, that we do whatever it takes to find this body, what fills that job classification, and then, you know, allow us the opportunity to assist you to employ them. Okay. Thank you, sir. Um, Mr. Townsend. Thank you, Mr. President. I appreciate those comments of the uh, city administrator. Uh, too often we, we're we throwing uh, uh, what I, I don't want to say garbage, but uh, it's close to it, into our uh, deliberations and get us off the point of what we're trying to accomplish. And I'm going to state again that we had the selective criteria and we followed it to the, to the letter, if you will. Uh, possibly there were some council members who were not satisfied with with some of the qualifications that were listed, but they had to speak up and, and voice that. But to go back and go to Landrum or to anybody else, in my opinion, it's it just totally ridiculous. And in fact, uh, I'm thinking about an upcoming uh, action that we're going to have and, uh, regarding the audit selection. And I, I read something where they were talking about if you're not going to if the first person uh, for him is not selected, then we're going to go to the second person. The, the point is that that appears to be the normal process that we do. But now we're coming up with some different kind of hogwash. And I am not going to be a part of sitting here going through this kind of foolishness. And that's what I think it is. And in fact, we all know that this person is an African-American female, and we have an opportunity to select select this person, and then we're going to come up with some kind of hogwash saying I'm not satisfied, I'm going to go to Lambert, we're going to throw the charter in there. I am completely tired of folks throwing monkey wrenches when we're trying to hire some folks. It is ridiculous. The person is qualified, and if you can't do the job, fire. But don't keep throwing smoke into our deliberation and, and keeping us here all day going through something that you should take at least 15 minutes. Thank you. Dr. Pratt. Thank you, Mr. President. And I'll follow on to Mr. Townsend's comment that we should take 15 minutes. I do have somewhere I have to be at 3, and I'm fearing we're going to be in hung situation, that if I leave, nothing will ever happen, and maybe if I stay, well, nothing Why don't happens. you move the previous question? So are we still on? Um, I thought we were back to the, the main motion. The mo main motion, yeah. It's, okay. It, and, and I think you had a question I, I, in the audience. And if, but, but if we move the previous question, it gets seconded, okay. and with that ends debate among us, and we allow the public to All still right. speak. Then I will move the previous question. That needs a second. Second. Okay. So 
All we're doing now is voting on whether to close debate or not. What do you vote on? To close debate. Still gives the public the opportunity to speak. Please vote. Okay, and that fails on a 4-3 vote. Okay, so we continue debating. Who wants to speak? Dr. Wu. I was going to be quiet, but I'm getting accused of things, and I feel a need to speak up. I'm only going to say this part because it's public record. You can look it up. The female candidate was my third choice. And you're asking me, the first choice was Scotty Davis. If it didn't like Scotty Davis, or you're saying because it didn't vote for her, but I vote for him, I don't see how you can have it both ways. The reason you're saying that I'm not voting for her doesn't count because I voted for Scotty Davis. It was a unanimous vote. All right, so if you look at it from a logical standpoint, we voted for a number one candidate from a giant pool of people, Scotty Davis. He declined. We then took that same pool and voted again. Again, we had a first candidate. That person's eliminated. It's almost like saying, do you like strawberry, vanilla, or mint ice cream? Okay, we take mint ice cream off. All right, do you want, let's say you want mint, but you're not gonna get it. Then I come to you and say, well, do you want strawberry or, or vanilla? You say, well, I want strawberry. You say, sorry, you can't have strawberry. What do you want? Now, I like to think that I vote for somebody because they're qualified. And it bothers me to be accused of not voting for somebody for any other reason. It pains me to hear that accusation made. Well, Mr. Geralds and Mr. Townsend have their lights on, as does Ms. Myers. You guys have already spoken twice to the main motion, so I'm going to enforce that today. Ms. Myers has spoken um, twice, but she's the maker of the motion, so she, she gets to close this out. Ms. Myers. Well, to me, the ranking of these individuals is not as important as who they work for. And I disagree with Mr. Reynolds, and I do think that following the charter is extremely important. That's our job. And we are able to go through Landrum or any other employment agency we want to. I believe that's perfectly legal. Um, and I, I, too, feel that, you know, that I, I did not support the number two candidate was, I, I ranked that person fourth, I believe, third or fourth. Um, and I do want to remind counsel that the vote for Scotty Davis was unanimous. And I was very excited about Mr. Davis. I believe, in my opinion, and from my observation, that that selection was derailed by the mayor's office. And that's one reason why I feel very strongly, and I'm not going to change my position on this, that we need to hire someone that we have control over the hiring and firing. And I do not believe that is a violation of the charter, and that's my position. I would urge you to also take that position. It does not mean that uh, the number two selection 
uh, would not be hired. It just simply means that that person would be hired through Landrum. I think that person will have much more job security uh, and peace of mind. And I know I would. So that's my position. And I'm so. Okay. We do have two members of the public. Uh, uh, Mr. Reynolds, I'm going to save you for, for, for last here um, um, that need to speak. And I just want all three of you to be aware that Dr. Pratt has to leave by 3 o'clock. So let's try to keep this brief. Ms. Dubasan. Thank you, Council, and I appreciate your patience with the process and each other um, in this. Um, as always, I am looking at the process. I was present at your special meeting, the one that Mr. Weiss sent her proxy in for, and I, Mr. Weiss did not think that your proxy should be counted, just to go on the record for that, because that is not the process that had been set into place. Um, I also believe that you should follow the process which you publicly stated that you would do, which was vetting the candidates through the human resources, then ranking them. And I believe if you go back and check your minutes that you said you would begin with number one and work through until you had someone. You are currently talking about a change of process again, which would mandate opening for advertisement again, which would mean vetting again, which would mean 60 days before you have someone. I believe you have the ability to today appoint an interim director that you can put under a private contract to the council. The city council has the right to hire what you need according to what was earlier said by Mr. Messer, I believe, that you could go out and put someone under contract. And then if you find that that person does not meet your long-term needs, you could advertise and go through the lengthy process. But do it on a month-to-month. -month. Do it on a week-to-week. -week. You know. What, whatever will get you someone functioning because all you're doing is stalling out another 60 days by doing what you're doing here and then you'll be right back to do we have a totally new group of candidates and then you've got to schedule to have them come in and then you've got to go through this ranking and who shows and who doesn't show and who thinks they should have been able to vote. I'm, I'm sorry, I keep watching you guys derail your own process. If you wanted Mr. Davis and he was worth more than the 92000 you should have firmly told Human Resources and the mayor, we want you to pay him beyond what we originally said, if that's what it takes to get him. And I believe you have the capacity right now, if you really still want him to be your person, if he hasn't already taken another job, to execute a letter of inquiry to him. Would he be interested in revisiting at a higher price? The lady who is number two was voted number two by the process you set into place. And to all of a sudden decide that those vetted candidates are not someone you would accept when a month ago you would have accepted them had they come out number one to me is very problematic. So I would just ask you to look at the process you set into place, the process you advertise to the public, and the process that I believe you should stick with. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. And Gary, we're down to five minutes and you and Mr. Reynolds both need to have the opportunity to speak. into the mic please you people I mean when you talk to one another we don't understand but I think you know who I am I'm Gary <coughs> Gary Sansing citizen of the city the county 1517 East Jackson for we'll start you're right Sherry Myers city council person and do we Stated it very well. We get, I'm, 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 you know, we get them confused too. So I know y'all. I know y'all. I watch it. We're all confused about what's happening and what you want to do. It's point someone who is qualified and follow your own procedures. I mean, it's like now, yo. Well, Mr. Dubasan said it very well. Okay. I mean, some of us come down here and try and keep up, and we got three people absent at this moment when you're trying to make a very important decision. Now, how long has it been? I was trying to figure it out last night. Does it take to get a staff person, to get an attorney, or someone who will represent you I'm 
so I, I still got a couple minutes. I'll chill out. You know, luckily I'm, I was told there's an important meeting going on. The one, I don't think it was in the paper. I didn't hear about it until yesterday. This is unbelievable. Unbelievable. And thank you for allowing me to speak because I wasn't sure if I come down here, the citizens have a right to speak. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. And okay. thank all of you. This is what it's about. This is what gets me so angry that we're still trying to decide if the mayor can appoint you people's staff. Remember, it's separate but equal. Okay, now, that, that, that. Go ahead, I'm listening. No, 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 go ahead, Larry. No, I don't remember anything about a powerful mayor, a strong mayor in that city charter. And, and that's why you have your own staff, okay? And I, I will, I don't know. We're about ready to lose another council member here. Pardon? We're about ready to lose Dr. Pratt. I understand that. Well, you're about to lose me too, but we'll. Okay. we'll All right. Thank I'm you. just chilling out and thank you. Thank you. And, and thank you for letting the citizens speak. Mr. Reynolds. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, you know, I, I think that I have a, the responsibility for addressing the charge that somehow the mayor undermined the choice of Mr. Davis. I dare say that there is no one that is more interested in finding a council executive than Mr. Reynolds. When I found out that Mr. Davis had decided that he did not want the job, I was stunned. I went into apoplectic shock when I found that your second choice didn't want the job. To suggest that the mayor's office, or more importantly, that I had anything to do with in any way derailing Mr. Davis, well, it's simply untrue, not supported by any shred of evidence whatsoever and personally offensive. That being said, as we continue to try to find a solution, might I suggest this? If this body was to make a request of the mayor to hire Landrum services, I don't think that would be an issue. That then provides a degree of separation that this body has been requesting and also would facilitate us finding a, pos a person for your position. And I'm going to take you on your word on that. It's 3 o'clock and we need to vote. Do Dr. Dr. Wu has asked, asked to, to speak again. Right. Everybody's spoken twice. Can I just make a quick comment? 15 seconds. 15 seconds. Thank you, Mr. President. Appreciate it very much. Mrs. Dubasan made a point, and I need somebody to help me because then it will help me decide how to vote. I do not remember ever making the pledge that we would go with number one, then with number two, and then number three. If that is the case, that we did do that, and somebody can show me where that is what we said, then I think there's an obligation that we do what we said we were going to do. D am I making sense? You're, you're, you're making sense. So what I want to know is where can somebody show me that I or the group made a pledge that we would do that? Because if we didn't make that pledge, Mr. Dubasan, I feel an obligation that we need. I did not pull the minutes. However, it was my impression that that was no, the no, I'm, that I'm was not saying place. impression. So this I, is totally I understand order. that, but by the very ranking order, process. Mr. President. Thank you. All I'm saying is, if what you're accusing us of Thank you. is accurate, then I feel the need that we need to follow that process. Okay. Okay. That, that's fine, uh, Mr. Weiss. I'd just like to make this vote subject to those minutes being brought forward for us because this will be reported out as an action um, and need to be voted at. I mean, is this action this final as like a Thursday night meeting? This is a Thursday night meeting here. Um, and that's my only concern is that maybe we would want to suspend this vote at this time until we have that documentation because that is a very serious concern of mine as well. 
Well, my, my recollection is the same as Dr. Wu's, is, is that the, the ranking system was to pick the number one um, 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 vote. So, okay. All right. And Mr. Gerald has departed. So please vote. What, what are we voting for? We're, we're, we're voting on to use Landrum Services to hire our council executive. And that in that whole process that our the Mr. Reynolds staff will be working with them, but they will also notify all three remaining candidates from that ranking system so they have the opportunities to still be included in that. Okay. okay. Well, my dilemma on voting on that is that if I have made a promise or the council has made a promise. I feel that there's an obligation to have that promise be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. And the only way that we'll know that is to go back and check the minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I, I don't I don't want to be obstructionist. All mm -hmm. I'm saying is is if we if we as someone has stated if we have indeed made a promise that we would go down the could, list. Could that be a friendly time. amendment to Miss Myers um, um, motion? If she would accept that, so I'll, I'll accept. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, I will accept okay. that. Okay. So that sub way. subject to verifying. Now, can we said then pending the fact that that's not verified, we can then go ahead and move on to vote on Landrum as per Mr. Well, Reynolds' yes. suggestion. Yes. Then we don't have to reconvene mm -hmm. if right. that turns out not to be accurate. Okay. May, may I sort of restate what then the motion is, just so that we okay. all know. That the motion is to to proceed with Landrum unless a quick search tomorrow comes up with us saying in the minutes that we were going to necessarily go to the second ranked candidate. Um, that just, mm -hmm. and Mr. Reynolds uh, doesn't. Like Mr. That. President, if I may, really yes, quickly, uh, the body needs to understand that a, a discussion is not a promise that a promise is if only arises from a vote from this body and that's why it's important to have votes so if it's if, if, if somebody brought it up as a discussion item well that's something totally different if it's not in the motion that was passed it's not a promise it's not an action of this body I just want to clarify that okay all right um, thank you sir okay please clear the lights okay please vote That passes on a 5-1 vote. Since this is the only business before City Council today, but before you run out oh, of here, I do, do have some house. Yes, sir. One more thing. Uh, when we, when you point out that we had spoken twice or three times or whatever it is, and then to allow someone to speak again, whether it's 5, 10, or 15 seconds without approval of the council is out of order in my opinion. Well, it, it was out of order, and you have my uh, apology on that. Ms. Duke, oh, oh. The, uh, you have my apology on that, so, uh, but the chair also has the, the ability to say, and I did not say it, if there is no objection from, from counsel, and I, I should have prefaced um, uh, my remarks with that. Okay, just quick house cleaning, uh, housekeeping, um, um, deals here. Oh, we're adjourned, but.